Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be talking about adjusting for missed shots. Okay, now this isn't like if you're at the range trying to dial in. You know, this is like shooting for when it counts. Okay, whether it's you know whatever a hunting type of situation, uh, or or you know long distance shooting for sport, uh, or World War Three broke out or whatever, um, and you're shooting at at some distance. Okay, and your shot misses right and there's lots of reasons why your shot might miss uh your your zero might be off um you know maybe your scope got bumped okay uh it's not likely to move your zero especially if it's a good uh quality scope uh, but that could happen a uh, more likely scenario uh might be because you know uh ammunition change right you zeroed in with one kind of ammunition and now uh, you ran out or for whatever reason you had to switch to some other type of ammunition uh and it's be behaving slightly different you know at at three four five hundred yards okay um you know it's probably not going to be that far off at 50 yards but at at 400 yards 500 yards you know just changing the ammunition uh, might make a difference uh the other the most likely thing even with your own ammunition uh is the wind okay if you're shooting at four or five hundred yards um the wind can really mess with you um now you might calculate that it's a five mile per hour wind and in fact it's a seven and a half or that you might think it's a 10 and in fact it's a five so you might guess the uh the wind wrong so uh we can make really quick fast corrections if we happen to see where the bullet lands okay so what's what's required here okay um is first of all we got to have that consistent trigger pull okay um and you know those of you guys that have been shooting for a while you know when you squeeze your trigger you know if you if you jerk the trigger or not right so the first thing you got to do is be honest with yourself did did you did you uh have a consistent trigger pull uh and usually i can tell aside from just feeling the trigger I can tell with the reticle. So, for example, here, grab this thing over here. Let's say, let's say this is my my target, right? And this is my aiming point, my reticle. And I put this on a target. What I want to see is when I squeeze the trigger, it goes boom, 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 and lands back. If it goes boom or boom or boom, that's an indication that I that I jerked the trigger. So when you squeeze the trigger and your and your reticle goes boom and lands back on it, that's a good indication. Um, that that you had a a good trigger squeeze, um, and that's also one of the reasons you know you want to basically look in your in your scope and see what that reticle does. The reticle is going to give you a lot of information. It's going to tell you, uh, for example, if you had a good trigger squeeze. And one, that's one of the nice things about uh, shooting five five six is that when that gun goes bang, uh, the gun doesn't jump too much. You can actually you can stand your target, uh, and you can observe what your reticle actually does when you're shooting some of the more powerful calibers you know unless you got a muzzle break on it you know the gun might move too much and you might lose track of that reticle okay so if we are able to see what the reticle is doing uh that's going to give us uh important information with regards to our trigger squeeze was it a good trigger squeeze okay um but then if we're able to continue look you know if we're able to do this right and 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 keep looking through the scope uh, there's a chance right depending on what we're shooting at what the background is like there's a chance that we might see uh where the bullet land you know where the bullet hits okay it might be because of a dust cloud you know or whatever you're not always going to see it but there's a chance that you might see where the bullet goes now one of the things is if you're shooting at good distance one of the things i have observed is um especially if the sun's behind you right and you're shooting at, at good distance and you keep looking through that scope there's times when i can actually see the bullet going down range in the scope and, and as weird as that sounds you know let's say use this as an exact exaggeration let's say this is the back of the bullet right obviously this would be a very big bullet but if this is going down range even though it's going really fast that way okay so 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 let's say the bullet's going that way it's going really fast that way but the up down or side to side motion is not much okay so if you're observing this from the back all right um a spotter can definitely see the back of the bullet because he's got a usually has a better scope you know 
uh, a bigger lens. That's one of the things that a good spotter is looking for. A good spotter is actually tracking your bullet uh, all the way to the target. Um, and and he can he can give the shooter information like that. But uh, even if you're shooting yourself uh, at long enough distance with the right lighting, uh, you can kind of see the back of your bullet get all the way to the target, um, or you can see the impacts, right? Because let's say the lighting con the, the, the the lighting conditions aren't right, um, you can you know sometimes you might be able to see the impacts, especially if it's like a sandy, dusty, you know type of area, and you might see where they hit. So if we see where the bullet hits, we can make a really, really fast adjustment, okay? Um, so rather than, I mean, the last thing we wanna do when it really counts is start trying to mess with the dials, right? Uh, the assumption is that, we, ha we have to go on the assumption that our rifle has held zero uh, and it's some other factor that's affecting the bullet, most likely wind, but maybe different ammunition or whatever. So I've got two different reticles here, right? This side over here is the, the Griffin grid. This side over here is the Raptor. So um, let's say I'm shooting at 400 yards, right? So with the, with the Griffin grid, basically it looks like, first of all, let me show you on a piece of paper what it looks like, and then I'll show you this blow up, okay? So two different reticles we're looking at. So this is the, the Griffin grid. You know, that's what I have in my primary arms. Uh, that, that's in the primary arms. SLX 1 to 10 by 28. Each of those dots is exactly one mil apart, okay? Um, so th this doesn't give you wind holds or anything like that. They're just one, one mil apart, and you use that for measuring, okay? Um, now, you can also use this for, for wind holds, right? Because basically, uh, you know, you can memorize certain certain numbers like let's say with a uh with a five five six uh i think let's say at 500 at um i think with a 10 mile per hour wind uh at uh at uh 400 yards it would be a, a one if it's a crosswind it would be a one mil hold uh and then at 500 yards with a with a um with a 10 mile per hour wind it would be a two mil hold okay so you can so you can figure out which you, know, you can you can make wind adjustments with this, um, but this is but basically this is these are symmetrical dots. Okay, so we're, we're going to look at this side over here. All those dots are symmetrical. They they're, they're basically equally spaced one mil apart. Now on this side over here, uh, I've got the M8 Raptor, which looks like this. Okay. All right, so that's your M8 Raptor. So these dots over here, they're not perfectly spaced apart uh these dots here are the first dots your five mile uh, let's say if we go down to the let's go to the 600 yard line uh because they're a little further apart you'll see it. so so the first dots uh, five miles per hour next one is 10 15 and 20 okay so those are wind holes right so if you come down here let's say to the 800 yard line you'll see that you still got four dots but the, the space between them is a little further apart so again you got 5 10 15 20 mile per hour uh wind holes uh, this is calibrated for 556 uh, 308. Uh, now, interestingly enough, on this line over here, on the on the 800 yard line, the distance between these dots uh, is about one mil apart. Okay, so if we needed to uh, do some uh, milling, you know, we can use this 800 yard line, right? That's a quick way I found to basically, um, you know, I mean, obviously with this particular reticle, I've got mill lines out here in the scope, but if you have one of those Raptor scopes that doesn't have mill lines built into it um it turns out the 800 yard line those dots are, are, are about one mil apart okay so you can use the raptor uh that way for for, for, for range uh estimating okay so let me put the paper down i'm going to kind of give you guys a blow up over here all right so so this is this is the griffin grid right uh so even though my my, my artwork here is kind of shitty um each of these dots is exactly one mil apart. So basically with, uh, you know, like if I was with 5.56, five, 77 grain, I would zero in at 50 yards on that Chevron, okay? Uh, so now this is obviously, this is not the scale, but the, the top of the spine over here, that was, that's my 300 yard hold. Then the first line over here is 400. 500 and then 600, okay? That's how it works out. Now, again, these are one mil apart. 
Uh, but that's just how it happens to work out with, with 556, okay? Now, you'll notice that the shoulders over here, they're at different sizes, so you can also use this for auto ranging. So at, at, at 400 yards, you match it up with the shoulders. At like 400 yards, you know, you, so you just match it up with the shoulders really quickly to figure out what distance you're at, and then you know which line you're at, okay? But let's say you, you factor that you've got, let's say you're shooting at, at 500 yards, which is this, uh, and you've got uh, um, uh, you've got a, um, a 10 mile per hour wind, right? So that means you would hold on this dot over here, right? So you're holding on this dot right there. Okay? So now you pull your trigger. You're looking through your scope, right? When you and when the when the when the when the when the, when the scope recalls, you're holding on this dot. You see that this dot here basically stays on your target, right? So it comes up, boom, and then falls down in the same spot. But then as you continue looking through the scope you see that your bullet landed over here where this dot is, right? So you guessed you guessed 10 miles per hour, but the wind's actually 5 miles per hour. Or, or apparently that's, it doesn't matter at that point because you know what to adjust. If you were aiming on this dot and you saw your bullet uh, land over here on this dot, then what you do is you just shift, shift this dot over to your target, and now that's your new aiming point, okay? So that is a really quick way... Uh, using these complex reticles um, to uh, you know to adjust for 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 misses, right? Regardless of what the reason is, you change ammunition, the wind isn't what you thought it is, whatever. As long as your trigger pull is consistent, and when you pull that trigger, you you saw that your aiming point, right, whatever it is, didn't you know when basically didn't jump to the side of the target. Where if you see where that bullet lands, that's the that's your new aiming point, okay? Now, if you are working with a spotter, okay, your spotter basically should also be looking at it because ideally your spotter would have a scope that has similar markings in it. Um, and, and basically if he sees you, if you're aiming over here uh, and he can see that the bullet lands there, he would tell you to adjust one mil to the left and then you know immediately you gotta, uh, you know, not that's your new uh, aiming point, okay? Um, now, another way that this works great, if you have two guys uh, basically, two two uh, marksmen with the same uh, the same identical reticle. Okay, so let's say they calculate that. Let's say it's a 10 mile per hour wind. They're both looking at the scope. You know, they're both looking through the scope using the same dot, right? They both calculate. Okay, we're at 500 yards. Where you where wind is 10 mile 10 mile per hour crosswind. We're holding on this dot over here. So the first shooter takes his shot, while the second shooter is observing to see where the bullet lands, okay? So they both got the same dot on the target. First shooter takes a shot, second shooter is observing, and he notices that the bullet lands on this, then he moves that dot over to the target, he pulls the trigger, he gets the hit. So the way it looks is like you got two shots, a miss and a hit, okay? But they, you know, it, but they came from two different guns, right? Because the, the second gun has the same scope, um, with the, you know, with the same reticle, and and they're 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 looking to see where the bullet hits so they can make a quick adjustment. Okay, so that's what your with your Griffin grid here with the Raptor. Um, it would work the same way because basically here you've got uh, you've got these are now these aren't these dots are not one mil apart. These are now wind holes. Okay, so with uh, let's say so this is my 400 yard line. So my five miles per hour is on the shoulders here. Then that's my 10, 15, 20. Okay. And then when you get further out, that's my 5, 10, 15, 20. Now, if you notice that, they kind of go out. So the way it sort of works out is like the like the dot below is like kind of in between. So the point, but the point is you can use this exactly the same way, regardless what line you're on, right? Because, because here, these are mills, these are winds. So here, same deal here. Let's say we're at, at 400 yards. Same deal, we think that, uh, no, 500 yards. Let's stick with the same number. We're 500 yards. We think that it's a 10 mile per hour wind. Well, let's say let's say it's a five mile per hour, right? We think it's a five mile per hour wind, and we're using that first dot right there. Okay. Uh, no, actually, the, the the five on this one, that five mile per hour would actually be the shoulder over here. So we're using the shoulder here for that five mile per hour wind. All right, and then we pull the trigger, and it turns out that the bullet lands close to this dot here. Well, now that dot moves over to this spot, and that that dot is now our new aiming point okay so that's a really quick fast way um to to adjust for misses right um you know without having to 
you know, dial, you know, worry about dialing turrets and anything like that. That's why you want a caliber. Uh, ideally, you want a caliber or you want the gun set up in such a way, be it with a, with, with, with a muzzle brake or whatever, that you can continue to look through your scope and keep the reticle on target and ideally observe where the bullet impacts so that you can, uh, you, you, you can make your follow-up shot. Okay? Um, and this is the reason also why I tell people that if you're going to have a scope, an amount that comes out to about a pound and a half, right? If you're going to be carrying this amount of weight on the gun, okay, I want this type of a capability, okay? Uh, if I'm not interested in this type of a capability, uh, you know, I'll just use a, a, a red dot with a magnifier behind it, okay? Or, or a prism scope with a magnifier behind it. Uh, because the benefit of that is like at night, I can just rip off the, you know, I can rip off the, uh, the magnifier and now I have a much lighter rifle. I don't have to carry a pound and a half at night, okay? Um, so if you're going to be carrying a, about a pound and a half on your, on your, um, on your rifle, it's worth it to have a reticle that, uh, that gives you all these capabilities. And maybe you're not at, the, you know, we're talking about like range estimating, auto sizing, all that kind of stuff. And maybe you're not at that point now, but you'll grow into it, okay? Uh, so th those are my thoughts on that. Like instead of buying, let's say, like a two or three hundred dollar uh, simple scope that has like a very simple reticle, I think it's worth it to pay a little bit more to have a complex reticle that you can you can grow into, that you can go take a class. That you know, because if, if you show up to a class with a very simple reticle, they're going to be like, okay, we really can't do much with this because you, you know you can't do all the things that we're, we're we're talking about. Now this one over here. Uh, this is, right now, it's like $450 from Primary Arms. to give you guys a peek through it. Um, this is the one with the Miffin grid. Now, this is a second focal plane scope. Okay, let's see if I can get this to kind of focus. So, this is a second focal plane scope. So, that what that means is that you're going to see those, you're going to see the, that reticle in all uh, magnifications. But, it's, but, the, but the measurements are only true in... Um, in eight ma in uh eight in, in your max magnification uh, actually this is this is a 10 it's not an eight so this is a 110 so you gotta be in your max magnification uh for the for those mill dots to be accurate Let's see if i point it down you guys can get a better picture Yeah, you can actually kind of see see it in the shadow over there. Mm. I'm not gonna get the focus. Uh, we kind of got it there. Uh, anyway, um, so that's information I want to share with you guys today. Um, I've I've had both of these scopes off the rifle for almost two weeks now, right? Um, because basically I I took these, I got away from the gun range, I uh, took these out into the city, and basically I, I had put these on on real. On, on what would normally be realistic type of targets on cars, on people, on bicycles moving, on boats, uh, airplanes, okay? Um, and that's one of the things that you got to do with this type of a scope, right? Um, don't just, you know, I mean, there's only, there's only so much stuff that you can do at the gun range with something like this. Uh, you know, in, you want to get some experience uh, using this on realistic type of targets. Now, obviously, you got to take it off the rifle, uh, you know, but you, but there's a lot of things to be learned by taking this off the rifle and, and doing these type of observations, you know, out there in, in the real world. I've done a, a whole video series on these two scopes, uh, particularly this, this, uh, this one over here, the Raptor. This is the M8 Raptor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, um, a link below to a playlist that I have set up, uh, specifically for this scope. Now, this is a $1,500 scope. Let's see if I can get this thing to focus. Come on, give me the focus. Turn off the sight, get off the board there. There is a first focal plane scope, so you see, you're going to see one type of a, uh, you're going to see a different image in, in uh, one magnification. Nope, let's try a different spot, let's see if I can get it to focus that, that way.
bring it out a little bit. Uh, yeah, I don't think anything's going to... Somebody has told me to try doing a manual focus, but I can't make it work on this camera. Right, let's try max magnification. If you can see the reticle. Oh, okay, that's a little better. So you see a different image when you are in uh, in your max magnification, which is 8 power on this scope. So yeah, I just want to give you an idea of what these reticles actually look like. Um, but anyway, that's that's the deal with uh, the camera back out with adjusting for missed shots for whatever reason. You know, different ammunition, wind. Uh, you know, um, follow the, keep that aiming point on the target. Try to observe where your bullet landed. Okay, and then wherever it landed. That's your new aiming point, right? So if I take a shot out there, let's say I'm just completely off. This Griffin grid gives you lots of dots here. So let's say I'm holding over there and all of a sudden like I end up with a hit over here. Well, now I just shift this to my, you know, I shift the scope up, put this dot on my target, pull the trigger, and I, I should get a hit uh, if my if my trigger pull is consistent, okay? So in the, um, in the comments and in the description below, I'm going to put a playlist with a lot of videos that I have done with working with these complex reticles um, that I think you guys will, you know, you'll, you'll get a lot of useful information out of. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all soon.